This conference will now be recorded. Recorded. Hello and welcome everyone. Let us start with the new guideline. Uh, this guideline has been updated recently and it's an anti corticosteroids to reduce the uh, neonatal morbidity and the mortality. Now let's go through the key points that have been mentioned in the very beginning of the guideline because they keep on running through the guideline. A course of antenatal corticosteroids, they are very useful if the birth happens within seven days of giving this antenatal corticosteroids because they help to reduce the perinatal and the neonatal death and they help to reduce the neonatal distress um, syndrome, the respiratory distress syndrome, right? But uh, see, uh, when you have a patient who has got a uh, planned caesarean birth and if she opts to go between 37 to 39 weeks in those cases you need to res uh, respect the woman's decision and explain to her the potential risks and the benefits of the course of the antiretal corticosteroids nice the guideline actually suggests that if uh, someone has to go for the planned caesarean section it should be done by 39 weeks not before that all right so uh, in the cases where it is going to be early, you require antenatal corticosteroids. You need to ex explain the women that there is a risk of hypoglycemia and potential developmental delay with the antenatal corticosteroids, right? Also, it should be offered to women who uh, have imminent delivery between 24 to 34 plus six weeks. So it should be all uh, given to these patients and explained uh, the benefits and the risks uh, in twins and triplets now you have to give a targeted antenatal corticosteroids you cannot give the routine antenatal corticosteroids dose in these patients and uh, uh, it doesn't uh, help uh, routinely so only when these patients are at risk of preterm delivery uh, give them targeted antenatal corticosteroids also uh, we have seen that uh, if there is a risk to the mother's or the baby's health or uh, to their uh, life, then in that cases, you cannot wait for the antenatal corticosteroids to uh, act or you cannot wait for the antenatal corticosteroids to be given. You just have to do the delivery, right? Uh, of course, it needs to be given who, to the patient who have PPRM and who uh, we uh, are at risk of having preterm birth. And you know that uh, the risk of neonatal death reduces if the first dose of the antenatal corticosteroid is given within 48 hours of the birth okay and uh, we also see the benefits if it is given within 24 hours of the birth uh, now we have seen that uh, they help for at least seven days uh, if the birth happens within seven days of giving antenatal corticosteroids and uh, we have seen that the nice guideline uh, doesn't um, routinely suggest to have birth before 39 weeks in a Planned caesarean section. Now, those who are undergoing planned caesarean birth between 37 to 39 weeks, we have seen that uh, they should be explained the risks and the benefits. And what should they be told? They should be told that uh, although the antenatal corticosteroids may reduce the admission to the NNU for respiratory morbidity, that means the respiratory morbidity is going to get reduced and the risk of admission is going to get reduced to the NNU, but it is uncertain if there is any reduction in the RDS, transient tachypnea of the newborn or NNU admission overall. Okay, so you have to explain this and also explain that there is an additional risk of hypoglycemia and potential developmental delay. Okay, to the baby. Uh, we have also seen that the risk of respiratory morbidity is around 5% at term. Remember this 5% because this may come as SBA. So the risk of respiratory morbidity is 5% at term and it decreases with the uh, advancing gestational age. Okay. Now compared uh, to the vaginal birth, now the infants who are born at season and section, they are at risk of RDS, TTN and admission to the NICU, right? We know this and that is why the NICE guideline suggests to have planned caesarean section at or after 39 weeks. Going, moving forward, there's another important table there in the guideline that the corticosteroid admission has benefits when administered to women in whom there is eminent preterm birth and uh, you can anticipate the uh, preterm birth and also uh, 
in patients who have established preterm labor ppram or planned preterm birth before 24 weeks of gestation but of course they should be told about the risks and the benefits so this is a very important chart there now for those patients who have uh, the risk of delivery between 22 to 34 plus 6 weeks then there is a highly likely a uh, chance of reducing so what is uh, the benefit the benefit is highly likely to reduce remember they have written highly likely so what uh, what it is going to reduce the perinatal mortality the neonatal death and the respiratory distress the neonatal respiratory distress and it is likely to reduce the intraventricular hemorrhage and de developmental delay uh, in childhood so remember highly likely and likely okay again reduction in the above conditions are most likely to be seen if birth is 24 to 48 hours after starting the treatment a reduction in the respiratory morbidity or uh, morbidity is likely to be seen if birth is within 7 days of starting the treatment okay so remember these highly likely and likely things you uh, may be asked what are the highly likely things or you may be asked what is likely to reduce and you have to answer accordingly now there are some harms also in the diabetic women specifically we have seen that it reduces or changes the glucose tolerance right for at least 5 days in diabetic women and it is likely to reduce the birth weight if the birth is more than 7 days after the steroids right and it may also increase the psychiatric and the behavioral diagnosis if the children are born at term so these are the harms associated with the antenatal corticosteroids now this has got different benefits and different harms at different uh, gestational ages so with a woman who between 35 to 36 plus 6 weeks it is going to reduce the respiratory support the harms are it is going to increase the neonatal hypoglycemia and also in, going to increase the psychiatric and the uh behavioral diagnosis in children born at term okay then uh, before the planned cesarean section birth at term so 37 to 39 weeks it may reduce the admission to nnu with respiratory morbidity it may reduce the educational attainment at school age okay so these are the things at different ages wo well, about the rescue course if the treatment is more than 7 days ago then it is likely to reduce the need for respiratory support and likely to reduce the birth weight that is the main difference is about 80 grams that it is going to reduce the head circumference and the length and the neonatal blood pressure Okay, so moving ahead, going to the multiple pregnancies, women with twins and triplets should be offered targeted antenatal corticosteroids for early birth in line with the recommendations for singletons. Okay, so you have to remember that you uh, you cannot give antenatal corticosteroids unnecessarily because again it is going to cause harm uh, to the pregnancies. But of course, when it is needed, they should be targeted. in diabetics specifically you know that it is going to affect the maternal glucose tolerance at least for 5 days so the patient should be on monitoring for 5 days and the insulin dose may be required uh, like you may require to increase the insulin dose and you have to keep a close monitoring of the patient also remember that there is an increased chance of neonatal hypoglycemia in uh, diabetic uh, patients in pprm again this is very much recommended along with the risks and benefits explained to the women okay so it should be offered to women who with pprm uh now what are the types there are two types dexamethasone and betamethasone and both are given as 24 mg and they can either be given 12 mg 24 hours apart or uh, dexa may be given as 6 mg 12 hours apart now remember that dexa is more useful than beta to improve the or to reduce the risk of in, intraventricular hemorrhage whereas uh, beta methasone phosphate or acetate may reduce the risk of 
chorioamnionitis okay uh now going ahead with the betamethasone there are two types we have seen uh, betamethasone sodium phosphate it is more soluble and uh, has short half life whereas uh, sodium acetate is insoluble and has long half life okay so acetate is long and phosphate is short so the uh, dose uh, uh, the optimum dosage strategy for beta methasone sodium phosphate is not clear however given the short half life a similar dose schedule to dexamethasone may be pragmatic so you can give in the same way as we give the dexamethasone dexamethasone phosphate is a soluble preparation which is slightly cheaper than beta methasone sodium phosphate or acetate mix and does not require refrigeration okay so remember beta methasone can be given uh, as a mixture also so there is 50 50% of phosphate and acetate which is available in uk and dexamethasone is more cheaper so it is more available in the developing countries it doesn't require refrigeration we know how it is given 6 mg 12 as a part and it is uh, uh, going to reduce the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage more right now the side effects are almost the same except that there is a little more discomfort at the injection site with beta methasone phosphate or acetate mix now antenatal corticosteroid use reduces the neonatal death when the first dose is given within the 48 hours prior to birth now we know that the neonatal death is going to reduce within 48 hours and the rds is going to reduce if the birth occurs between 24 to 24 hours to 7 days after the second dose of the antenatal corticosteroids right now if you have still have to give cort antenatal corticosteroid and uh, you don't know when the baby is going to come out so the when the uh, birth is going to be there so you still can give it because uh, the benefits are seen even within 24 hours of the first dose right now the uh, we have seen this that the women should be told about neonatal hypoglycemia in late preterm and early term newborns who have recently had antenatal corticosteroids so you have to keep an eye on neonatal hypoglycemia uh, in these patients and explain to the women before what are the risks to the women so it is going to affect the maternal blood glucose levels baby for the baby it is going to cause the lower birth weight the more the doses the more is the chance of lower birth weight it is going to affect the weight the head circumference and the length of the babies again it is going to cause neonatal hypoglycemia and there is a dose dependent increased risk of poor executive function and visual motor function and it may therefore impact learning on later uh, imp uh, therefore impact on later learning right so it has been seen that it affects the educational uh, the academic part of the children also right we have also seen that uh, in one of the trials that there is increased cortisol response to the psychological stress right in these uh, children who have been given antenatal corticosteroids also it has been seen that those who have had planned cesarean section um, there was a lower quartile of academic ability and specifically who are extremely extremely uh, low birth weight which were uh, less than 1 kg in those uh, the exposure to antenatal corticosteroids was associated with clinically significant anxiety so it affects um, the academic ability it causes anxiety it causes um, a reduction in the uh, psychological stress handling what is the contraindication there is no contraindication as such but you have to weigh against the benefit and the risks R remember that uh, in the these patients who have got systemic infection you have to balance whether you uh, this is going to be more beneficial the corticosteroids are going to be more beneficial because what happens is it goes it is going to suppress the immune system of the mother and that is why it may activate the latent infections and exacerbate the fungal infections right so there is a chance that these infections may increase you know that uh, the single course of anti uh, antiretinal corticosteroids is not going to affect the antibiotic use or it is not going to increase the infections but you should always have caution before it is used in patients who have got systemic infection right Uh, we have seen this that the repeated courses of anti uh, corticosteroids the more is the chance of lower birth weight and that is why only a single 
a rescue dose should be given so the maximum number of corticosteroid courses given in one pregnancy is maximum is 3 it should not exceed 3 okay so if at all you have to give after 7 days like if the birth doesn't happen within 7 days and now there is a chance that the birth um, the patient is going to give birth or is going in labor then you can give only ex one extra rescue course it is only going to help to reduce the respiratory support um like the respiratory distress uh, it is going to reduce the risk of having respiratory distress but then there is more chance of having uh, other problems uh, to the baby more chances of having low birth weight and uh, children who receive repeated doses of antenatal corticosteroids they have lower systolic diastolic and mean arterial blood pressure remember this also this is again very important okay now this is about who that a single rescue course of antenatal corticosteroid if women remain at high risk uh, of preterm birth and more than 7 days has elapsed since the previous treatment so if there is no birth within 7 days you can give only one extra rescue course now that was a guideline i hope uh, this video has helped you to quickly go through the guideline and we have not missed any part of the guideline all the important things that can be asked as question has already been uh, discussed in the video and have been highlighted so go through it once again and uh, let me know if uh, there is anything else um, that you feel doubtful in this thank you